Today we're taking a little break from the gardening to do some DIY home crafts. The sun is finally starting to shine and it feels like summer, so I wanted to make my home feel extra summery by making these bright and colourful placemats and napkins. I'll show you how to make these quilted placemats that have an anti-slip backing, as well as these fabric napkins. I made six napkins and six placemats, but you can make as many as you want. I went bright and colourful because that's what summer feels like to me, but you can use any colours or fabric patterns that you want. Let's start off with the placemats. These are the current placemats I have. I like them both, but these are a little small and then these are a little too big. I like the fabric look of them, but the colours are a little more muted, which is great for some settings. But I wanted something a little bit more bright like these, but slightly bigger and made out of material. So I went to the craft store and I got myself this material. Super bright and colourful, perfect for the spring and summer kind of looks. I also decided it might be quite a fun idea to make them quilted, so I bought some four ounce wadding. Keep it fairly thin, because this is a placemat you don't want a big thick quilt as your placemat. For the bottom of the placemats I've just got this creamy colour cotton fabric that I just had in my fabric supply. But then I did realise that making a quilted placemat, if you're trying to cut on your plate, it's probably going to be quite slippy. So I bought some of this anti-slip mat stuff. It was £2.50 for two metres of it by 30 centimetres, which happened to be the exact size that I wanted my placemats to be. Before I went to the craft store, I did measure up roughly the size that I wanted the mats to be. And I decided I wanted the width about 40 and the height about 30. Now for the napkins. I have a slight obsession with buying pretty napkins. And as you can see, I quite like the colorful flowery ones. So for my reusable napkin, I got this gorgeous flowery cotton. Again, I wanted it bright and colorful, summery spring kind of vibes. And I loved how many colors were in this fabric. I then needed to find like a backing or lining for the napkins and I couldn't decide on a color. So, I got six. I've always loved the same but different kind of look. So I've decided to do six different napkins with six different coloured linings. I tried to find six colours that closely match the colours inside the main fabric and I think I did pretty well. I really love this colour combination. If you wanted to do this with much more muted or natural colours, then I'm all for that too. So now I've got all the materials, let's get on to making. Let's get started on the napkins. Most of these paper napkins are 30 centimetres ish, so I think I'm going to do the same. A 30 by 30 centimetre square. I'm going to start by cutting out 32 by 32 centimetre squares because I'm going to use a one centimetre seam allowance. I'll cut out six in the main fabric and then one of each of these lining fabrics. So that is all my squares cut. When I went to the craft store, I did want to get some trim to go around the outside of the napkins, but I couldn't find any that kind of matched what I was going for. But I do have quite a lot of the lining fabric left over, and I'm thinking of making possibly some bias tape to use as a trim. But I'm just debating on whether it needs to be proper bias tape, whether it could just be, you know, a fold of the fabric so that it just looks little something like that and I would match the trim to the lining so this would be for the green. I am not an expert sewer here so so let me know in the comments if you think this sh I should have used bias tape but instead I'm just going to cut out some strips of fabric that I will then fold over and sandwich in the fabrics about that much which is I could call it half a centimetre so I need to cut out three centimetre strips you can find trim, like I really wanted to use rickrack kind of looking trim, but I just couldn't find it in the correct colours that I wanted. But I think that would look really nice too. Or you don't even need this bit at all. This is just an extra step that I'm doing. That is all the strips cut out, so it's time to put it all together. First step is to give everything an iron. I'm also going to fold all these strips in half and iron them flat.
before we start, I'm just going to join these two strips of fabric together to make one long loop. So I'm just going to put them right sides together and sew them here. And the same at the other end. To start, I'm going to get one of the joined edges and put this somewhere along the edge, just making sure it's not directly in a corner. Just going to add a clip to hold that there. And I'm going to clip all along this edge too. Now, when I come to a corner, I'm going to line up the edges and hold down just in the tip of the corner. Then taking the next strip, fold it down so those edges line up. You'll create this little corner here. I'm going to add some clips as close as I can to the edge, holding the edges together. Just realised I shouldn't have closed this loop because this strip of fabric is not the correct size. So I'm going to do the rest of the three edges until I get to this point and then I can cut this down to size and sew it actually where it needs to be. So I'm just going to measure exactly where it should end. Add in a pin. Now go back to the machine and sew there instead. Trim off the excess and finish the edges. So now I've pinned in place the trim, I'm going to pin in the main fabric. Right sides together, so you're sandwiching the trim between the bottom layer and the main fabric. Line up all the corners and then I just go around and re-clip the pins so it traps in the main bit of fabric. When you get to the corners, make sure that this edge piece isn't trapped by any of the pins on either side. It stays loose. Now I'm going to sew all the way around with a one centimetre seam allowance and leave a small gap at one of the edges so we can flip everything the right sides out later on. One of my tips is to put an extra pin or clip where you need to remember to stop sewing to leave your gap. So that is going to be my gap. For the corners, make sure we're not sewing down the edge of the trim. Fold the trim over to one side, hold the trim down on one edge. When you get to the corner, with your needle down, put round the fabric and carry on sewing. So now it's all sewn together. It's time to flip it the right sides out. I will give the corners a little trim too, just so we get nice sharp corners. And then through this gap that we left, flip the fabrics the right side out. And we can see if our corners worked. Pulling out the trim, got a nice rounded corner. Like I said, if you had bias tape, it might have been a slightly smoother curve, but I'm perfectly fine with that. The final step, give this all a nice press, and then I'm gonna do a top stitch all the way around the edge, making sure I close this opening nice and neatly too. One final trick to just make the edges look extra neat is where I've started and ended my threads. I'm going to come onto this side of the fabric and gently pull on the thread until a little loop appears. I take a pin or something small and pull on the loop until it pulls the thread up. That has taken the thread from this side onto this side. Let's do the same for the other thread. Now all the thread ends are on this side of the fabric. I'll then add a little knot to these threads and cut them off and they'll blend in nice and seamlessly and hide nicely in the pattern and in the cream background, making this contrast thread look a little bit neater. Now to do the same for the remaining five napkins. Now let's do the placemats. I originally did want the 
final result of the placemats to be 30 by 40 centimeters, but this anti-slip matting is 30 centimeters wide, which means with seam allowance, the mats will end up being about 28 centimeters wide instead, which is fine. I don't think it'll be that much difference. So the first step is to cut out the anti-slip matting, this main fabric and the lining fabric, all the same size, 30 by 42 centimeters which will be allowing all the seam allowances. I'm now going to sew them together by having my main piece of fabric my non-slip fabric in the middle and my lining fabric sandwiching it all together. I'll sew all the way around with a one centre seam allowance, leaving a gap so we can then flip it the right way around and the non-slip will be on the back with the main fabric on the front. just given it a press on quite a low setting so I didn't melt the lining underneath and I do quite like how padded that is already just from this lining but I'm going to cut out a piece of wadding to fit inside I'll cut that out pop it inside see how it looks but if you didn't want to do the wadding then this is definitely thick enough for a placemat as it is I like that too. I am planning on doing some quilting lines to hold everything together as well. And I will do an edge stitch all the way around to close off this opening. And we will see how that looks. But I'm gonna mark on my quilting lines as well. I have switched to a walking foot to do the quilting just to make it all a little bit easier and hopefully a little bit neater. If you don't have a walking foot, you can just use your normal sewing foot. You just have to take it slowly. You might have already yelled this at me, but I realized trying to sew this way through is the anti-slip. So it's very difficult for the sewing machine to Go over it. So for the outside lines it was fairly easy, I just flipped it over and sewed with the main fabric down and the walking foot could just step over the non-slip. But for these lines to keep them exactly where I want them, I'm just going to use a bit of greaseproof paper and I'm going to pin this to the other side of the fabric. Then I can sew on my line this way up so I can follow the lines that I've drawn and then hopefully I can just tear this greaseproof paper away fairly easily and have nice, clean, straight lines. perfectly so now I'm just going to do the same for all the other lines. And there we go, I've given it a quick press to just flatten it all out and to remove my heat erasable pen and I've tied off all the threads so it's nice and neat. And I'm really happy with that. I think it definitely needs that bit of wadding to give it a bit of a padding. So now I just have to finish these five and then it will be time to set the table.
and that is all the placemats and napkins completed. I really love how they turned out. I love the quilting effect on these placemats and I think the bright rainbow pattern is going to make all my tables look extra summery. But because they're so colourful I can use them with any colour scheme too. I can go big and bold and bright with the rest of my decorations or keep it simple and just let the placemats shine. These napkins will also be perfect to make even the simplest table decorations look that extra bit special because I could go slightly plainer on the table decorations but add that pop of colour with these napkins. And everyone will always know which napkin is theirs by which colour is on the back. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you create some napkins and placemats like these. I would love to see how they turn out. So tag us on our Instagram at the Jelly and Pickle. Leave a like if you want to see some more easy home DIYs like these. A big thank you to everyone who's joined our channel recently. I've got lots more DIYs and garden renovations coming very soon. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that.